Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide. No escape from reality. Not in this film. Roll them. Coming to get you, Barbara. Keep repeating. It's only a movie. Today, for your delectation and viewing pleasure, 1965's The Possessed, La Donna Del Lago, otherwise known as Lady of the Lake. Not that Lady of the Lake. There'll be no M. Night Shyamalan here, I'll tell you, matey boy. I won't have it. I won't stand for it. I may sit for it, but I won't stand for it. Directed by... Luigi Bazzoni, who later went on to direct the 1971 Jalo The Fifth Chord, and also 1975's De Homme, or Footsteps on the Moon, or Footsteps, bracket, on the moon, close brackets. Don't open brackets and forget to close brackets. It, it's a poor show. He co-directed this film with Franco Rossellini. There's a name to conjure with. Uh, yes, he is the cousin of uh, Roberto Rossellini. This is Franco Rossellini's only directing gig. He then went on to produce movies by Rossellini and Fellini, but did never direct again. So we have two directors, one who went on to make Others Yellow, one who went on to produce other movies. Peter Baldwin stars as Bernard, a writer who returns to an out-of-season Lakeside Resort Hotel that he'd stayed in the previous year. He has returned looking for a chambermaid that he is now obsessing over called Tilda that he had fallen in love with but it was an unrequited love and an unknown love. Bernard discovers Tilda is dead having committed suicide. After meeting a local photographer Francesco uh, who is a hunchback the character introduces doubt as to whether Tilda truly did commit suicide or whether she was actually murdered. Bernard sets out to investigate her death. Suspicion falls on Enrico, the owner of the hotel that Bernard is staying in, and also Mario, his son. Bernard witnesses Mario returning home late one night with his new young bride from their honeymoon, led by Enrico down the hallways. No one looks happy. As Bernard is digging up the past to discover what happened to the object of his unrequited love, a new tragedy unfolds before him, leading to Adriana being discovered dead, drowned in the lake. All this takes place while Bernard is clearly ill with a fever. As events continue towards their conclusion, it becomes less clear. Are we watching reality? Fantasy? Are we watching a dream? What we have here is an intelligent murder mystery. The film is black and white. It is proto Jalli, so falls between Mario Bava's early Jalli works in the early 60s and Dario Argento's Bird with a Crystal Plumage in 1969. Is it Jalli? Hmm. Hmm. Well, we have a beautiful woman whose throat is thrashed, admittedly not on screen. We have other beautiful women in peril, a murderer, an artist, not someone from the authorities, in this case a successful novelist, and of course we have the police, who at this time have nothing to go on. To quote a joke from the two Ronnies circa 1977. This is also as much Hitchcock, as much Latter-day Noir, as it is Jalo. It is Hitchcock through the lens of Bergman. It has a European art house feel, but it is still a thriller. It is still a whodunit. There is a deep melancholic feeling of cold that permeates this movie. It's filled with beautiful, stark, wonderfully lit monochrome imagery. The film is actually an adaptation of a successful novel of the time by Giovanni Camiso. The novel itself was based on an actual case in Italy in the early part of the century. The black and white cinematography by Leonardo Barboni is gorgeous. 
Barboni was an actor as well as a cinematographer, which is not a combination you often see. The stark lighting used in the filming creates some incredibly sharp shadow imagery. Wind blows, waves crash, screams break the silence, like that. The atmosphere here is so thick, you can cut it into slices, put candles on it and give it away in party goodie bags. That's adult party goodie bags, not the kids party variety, because that'd be a bit weird and a bit scary. Oh look mummy, it's yellow cake! Ah! The Possessed is probably the best ghost story to feature no ghosts whatsoever that I've ever seen. These are ghosts not of the spiritual kind. They are, these are ghosts of memories. These are ghosts of perception of memories. These are the ghosts of disenchantment. Of a reality that never was. This film is the aching in your heart for a loss that you'll never recover from. You may have noticed I quite like this film. Time is not always linear here. What appears to be a very straightforward mystery film. What appears to be a very straightforward whodunit. Very quickly subverts what you believe you're watching. There are scenes that you believe are reality. That are dreams. But that's not the end. It's not just a, oh it's a dream I've woken up. Their dreams are precursors and premonitions of scenes that then actually do take place. Bernard imagines he is within a boat, Francisco, and Francisco is laughing, a horrid, mocking laughter. Bernard wakes up in a cold sweat, only to then be contacted by Francesco to meet him to go out on the lake in a boat. What is imagined... What is reality? What is a dream? This is a film that will pay back you giving over your time and concentration. No phones, no chatting, no picking peanuts out of your belly button. The greatest compliment I can pay the possessed is that as soon as it finished, I reached for the remote and played it again. Back at the beginning of the 21st century. I went to see Mulholland Drive, but this film did have a similar effect on me. What did I just see? Did I just see what I think I just saw? And I watched The Possessed again, in the same way that I, 20 years ago, almost, I watched Mulholland Drive again. And again I had a very similar experience in that, after watching The Possessed twice, and since then I've watched it once more, it still doesn't seem to give up all its secrets. There is no real blood or violence here. And for anyone seeking the more exploitative tropes of Jalo, the lurid blood red, well that's out, it's black and white. Naked, nubile beauties. This isn't the film. If you're looking for shock horror moments, this is not the film. So there are no inventive deaths here. It's not about the shock element, it's not about the set pieces, it's not about the nudity. It is either very clever or very annoying. I'm not sure which, but regardless, it's worth a watch. This is exemplary filmmaking. This is probably the best film I've watched this year, and it could be the best film I've watched in the last few years. It, it is that good. I unreservedly recommend this film. It's tense, beguiling, engrossing. It creates a sense of a melancholic place and time that feels like something that you've lost and, and mourned over from a time that you've already forgotten about. This is very much like a memory. Have a guess what I'm going to give it out of five. Can you imagine? From one to five. To five. What do you think I might give it out of five? Oh, I don't know. I might give it a five out of five. This is a bias. The Possessed is available from Arrow. It's another wonderful addition. You don't need me to wax lyrical about how good they are. This is superb. 
This is superb. The black and white cinematography is crisp as though it was filmed in 4K yesterday. 4K black and white yesterday, clearly. It's a two thumbs up. That was The Possessed. What on earth can we possibly do to beat that? Mario Bava! It's Bay of Blood. It's the Mario Bava film, or one of the Mario Bava films, I haven't ever really cared for. I first watched this film on video. It was a video nasty. We'll talk about that a bit in the next episode. Mario Bava's A Bay of Blood. Yes, it seems to be I'm on an arrow run. It won't last. There will be other labels. Till next time, from a very happy and very relieved Mark, who has finally found a 5 out of 5, in the least jalo, jalo, <laughs> I have probably watched. Don't forget, it's only a movie. It's only a movie. It's, is this the real life? It is a real